Howdy do! <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Now in the last episode we left off in the Cursed Clock Tower after getting past the vault door that required a specific amount of gold. Anyway, we're going to first explore this basement portion of the clock tower in this video. And then we'll explore the top portion in the next video. Now obviously right here you want to make sure to use either flying armor or the Medusa head sole to avoid getting hit with spikes. Now in this uh, room here you can either head to the upper left, as you can see right over there, these gears are annoying, or to the lower left and we're going to go the lower route first. But we'll explore the upper later. Now the first enemy in this video is the Imp. It's just got a semi-rare soul to collect, so I'll be back once I have that. Okay, I've got the Imp soul now, which allows you to create a space that inflicts spiritual damage. Basically what this actually means is that it lowers the maximum HP of a monster. Uh, the more HP that it has, the lower that it goes, so that you can eventually uh, one hit a lot of monsters that could take multiple hits. For instance, if I use it here, Harpy dies in one hit, whereas it could take two or three hits regularly. So the stronger the enemy, the better it's, or the more effective it is. Anyway, the next monster on our list is the Malachi. It's got an item drop and a semi-rare soul, so I'll be back once I have those. Alright, I've got Malachi's soul, which summons a dark sphere that spews dark energy. How dark of it. <laughs> anyway, you've seen this one in action before. It's a level 3 soul. And this is the one that Dimitri tried to use on us back when we battled him. Anyway, I'm going to get Malachi's regular item drop and I'll be back. Alright, I've got the Malachi's regular item drop, which is the High Mind Up. And... It's a consumable, of course, that restores 200 MP. Anyway, notice the <laughs> lovely little nude statues in the background. <laughs> I'm not sure quite how Konami got away with those. They're pretty revealing. <laughs> anyway, moving on, we've got two enemies here that are new, but the first one is the Tan Jelly. Uh, it's just got a rare soul, so I'll be back once I collect that. Wow, that didn't take long at all, only about 10 of them. I uh, got the Tan Jelly Soul, which allows you to gain resistance to physical attacks. This only blocks physical attacks, not uh, soul abilities, but it's pretty good. And as you can see here, it's a level 1 soul, so I don't have to collect anymore. But I'm not going to use it for now. Now our next enemy up on the list is the Dead Pirate. I got its rare drop by luck there, uh, which is the Falchian. Falchian. I forget how to say that. Anyway, it's a sword with a wide crescent blade used by the Normans. And it's a little stronger than what we had. Anyway, I need to collect its item drop and semi-rare soul, so I'll be back. Okay, so far I have the Dead Pirate's soul, which may cause greater damage on enemies attacked from behind. So if you can sneak behind an enemy, you can do double the damage to it that you could from the front. For instance, I did 73 damage there, or 72, one of the two. But from behind, I do 144. So if you're using the Puppet Master Soul, that's an awesome combo. Anyway, I'm going to get its item drop now. Okay, I've got the uh, Dead Pirate's item drop, which is Rusty Food Tin. And it took <laughs> a hell of a lot longer than the soul or the rare drop took. Anyway, as you can see, it's kind of down at the bottom of the list next to the rotten meat and spoiled milk. And it says, are you brave enough to open it? Well, obviously, you shouldn't be brave enough unless you're wearing the ghoul soul, because it does damage, as you would expect with any rot food or rusty food. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to show off two abilities now. The first involves Persephone. Now notice if I kill the dead pirate normally, he kind of explodes and bursts apart. If I use Persephone, I vacuum his body up. <laughs> it 
it's kind of a neat little trick. Now the second I asked about in a previous video for people to give input on uh, the use of the werewolf soul. And it turns out that it allows you to uh, double or triple or quadruple up on uh, bullet souls. Look at that. I can basically do a whole string of them, although it does a real number to my MP as you can see there. And it works on most bullet souls, in fact, not just the killer clown. For instance, here's the war. See, you can make a whole string of them. <laughs> anyway, that's the use of the werewolf soul. Obviously, it could really <laughs> pwn some bosses real quick. So I may have to use that in an upcoming boss fight or two. We'll see. Anyway, moving on. This room really doesn't have anything special in it. I'm just clearing map percentage here. Watch out for those gold uh, Medusa heads. As you see there, it turned me to stone. So unless you're wearing your uh, petrification proof soul, I recommend avoiding them at all costs. And at the base here, we enter back to a, a very familiar area. The Garden of Madness, yet again. Now off to the left here is a new enemy, which is the Wok Wok Tree. And notice that it grows fruit. When the fruit hatches, they become Fleeman. <laughs> so you could farm Fleeman souls here if you wanted. Anyway, the Wok Wok's uh, tree's got a regular item drop and a rare, a semi-rare soul. So I'll be back once I have those. All right, I've got the Wok Wok Tree's uh, soul, which lowers strength and raises constitution. And I've also got its item drop, which is the Amanita Mushroom. Now the soul is level 9, and notice that it boosts your constitution by 4 points and lowers strength by 2 points. So essentially, if you want the highest possible raise in constitution, you want to use this soul. Unfortunately, you're going to have to take a hit to your strength to do so. Now the Amanita Mushroom is down here at the bottom of the consumables, right along with the rotten meat and spoiled milk and rusty food tin. And it's a toxic mushroom that causes hallucinations, so... Obviously, only eat that if you are equipped with the ghoul soul, just like the other rotten foods. Now, that switch I just pushed opened the uh, barrier uh, that we ran into earlier, right before we fought Dario... Or, actually, right after we fought Dario Bossy. So now, all of the Gardens of Madness are connected in one big loop. Oh, I love Persephone, but I should probably switch back to my normal setup. Huh, getting a little bit of lag here. Oh well. Hopefully it doesn't continue. Hmm, got some milk. <laughs> I think those skeletons could use some milk. <laughs> Keep their bones nice and strong. Anyway, uh, down here in this little uh, corridor, I don't kill that Raikuda. Uh, down here, this is right above the area where we entered the Dark Chapel, and we couldn't reach this earlier, but now we can, and we get the handgun. Uh, let's see, there we go. It fires 9mm rounds, and it's a weapon that really lowers your attack back to base. But, Soma does look pretty gangster when he uses it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this weapon is terrible, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, this lag is killer. Notice I'm doing 7 damage. Now, if I switch back to my Falchion, or Falchion, or Falcon, or whatever it is, sword, <laughs> and I do 40-something damage, and my souls do 70-something. So, yeah, there's no reason to use the handgun unless you just want to challenge, I guess. Anyway, this lag is killer, so I'm going to try to fix it, and I will meet you back in the Cursed Clock Tower. Alright, we're back at the Cursed Clock Tower. This is that area where we diverged and went down earlier. So now we're heading left. There's one more thing to collect, and then we'll call it a video. And next time we'll start heading up the Clock Tower. Another one of these big gear... 
knew he'd possess me. Yeah, those imps possess you, so make sure to try to get out of their grip as soon as possible. They can really be annoying in this area. Anyway, off to the left we get Army Jacket. And this is a new piece of armor. It's a jacket woven with a special fabric that resists cuts. And notice that it only lowers defense by one point. Now when it says that it resists cuts, basically what it actually means is that it lowers the amount of damage taken by slashing weapons. Not blunt or piercing or souls, but slashing. So for only one point of defense drop, I consider it a good compromise. Anyway, we'll call it a video here and next time we'll start climbing the clock tower. Bye bye.